Hey, what's up Blender users? I'm Jonathan and after we've set up this scene in the last video with a basic hole tracked onto the ground, we'll focus on creating the actual granular simulation and importing it into Blender in today's video. Oh and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. And with that said, let's get started. Before we switch over to Storm and create the granular simulation, I actually want to make our job a little bit easier because we can already export all of the existing geometry in our scene to use them as colliders in Storm. But of course we'll have to do some modifications to this hole, so let's go ahead and duplicate it and quickly add it into a temporary collection. Now with the new object selected we can isolate it by pressing slash on the numpad. Let's quickly check our face orientation and we might want to invert it, just so Storm knows that these faces are actually facing upwards. If we would go ahead and do this for our original geometry, we might run into some issues because we used the back facing value. So let's go ahead and select our temporary mesh again and in edit mode, let's go into edge select mode and alt click on the four edges. This way we are selecting all of these and now with E and S we can extrude them outwards. And just like this we have a nice ground plane for the collisions in Storm. Now we can just go to export and choose obj and in our project folder give it a fitting name. Let's select selection only and leave everything as is and now let's click on export. We can now disable this temporary collection and stop worrying about it. By the way we can bring all of the other objects back by pressing slash again and let's also disable face orientation. In Storm we can open a new project and immediately save it. Before we set up our granular simulation, we can quickly fiddle around with the global settings right here. I know that the end frame is 78 and I also don't want the particles to collide with the world ground. So let's right click on this value and set it to false. We can now add in a granular system which will drive our granular simulation. And let's start with the collider. You can see that we get a file path right here and we want to copy and paste our file path into this text field right here and let's type in our file name right behind it and you can see that we get our nice collider and everything should work just fine. Okay, let's go ahead and add in our source. The source right now is just a plane, which is not what I want. By the way, we can move it upwards by pressing W. I want the source to be a box and we could now either search through the storm files to get the box geometry or just add in another collider, copy its file path delete it and then copy the file path into our source. Great! If we now play our simulation you can see that on every frame particles are being emitted. This fits in some cases, but for our purposes I only want emission to happen on the first frame. For this we can use this value right here. Let's set it to 1 and now we're good to go. You can also see that everything is way too big. We can now position the source inside of here and scale it down on the y-axis, just like this. If we now play our simulation, you can see that particles are being emitted and they fall into the hole. We can fine tune this a little bit more, but I think that works great. Now we just need something to catapult these particles outwards so they shoot up. And for this we can just use another collider. But let's change the box.obj ending into sphere that obj, meaning that we are now using a spherical geometry. Let's also turn down the uniform scale value a little bit and move it downwards. We now want to animate this collider. So on the first frame, let's alt click on the translate y value and then move a few frames forward, move it upwards and alt click on it again. And we can now see that a simple explosion is happening. But this is way too fast for me, so let's make the animation a little bit slower. To access the animation's settings, we can click on this value right here to get into the expression view. And now we can change the frame right here to maybe 10. If we reset our simulation, you can see that the explosion is happening slower, which is great and exactly what I wanted. Of course, if we actually want to export this simulation to Blender, we would want a higher resolution. To do this we can go into this object right here and change the resolution. The default is 10 and I just changed it to 20. 
but you'll notice something weird happening and this is that if we play the animation now you can see that all of the particles fall through the ground personally i'm not entirely sure why this happens but somehow the collisions are now messed up luckily there is a fix and this is that we change this from a planar object to an object with an actual volume so what i did was back in blender I re-enabled and re-isolated our temporary geometry, went into edit mode and then selected the outer edge loop, extruded it downwards and with F filled it. You don't have to worry about these blue lines, these are just markers for me. To help with the export process, let's also add in a triangulate modifier. Your shading might become messed up, but you do not have to worry about it. So let's again go to export, OBJ and export this again. And after that, we want to change the file path to the newly exported file. And you can see that it imported it already. And now you're able to see that all of the particles are colliding correctly. So let's change the resolution to, for example, 40. Let's play it again. And yeah, that looks great. Of course, right now I moved it upwards, but there's actually a reason behind this, which I will explain later. For the moment, this doesn't look like dirt the particles don't stick together like you would expect them to do. So let's change it. Let's go into the granular particle system and change the relink threshold to 1. And now you'll be able to see that some particles stick together and form these little groups and this already looks a lot better. To make this simulation look even more realistic, we can change the initial placement. Right now I would emit these particles in this box shape on the first frame. But there's actually something we can do to make this look a lot better. Let's change the single shot frame value to a frame later on in the animation, for example 50. And if we now play the animation you can see that all of the particles fall down and nicely lay in our hole. Great! If we now go ahead and press spacebar again, you can see that all of the particles now collide with the sphere and we get a much more realistic placement. Awesome! So let's use that. The last thing I want to do is to disable this collision object on the last animated frame. On this frame right here, let's alt click on enabled, go one frame further, change it to false and alt click on it again. Now the falling particles won't collide with the sphere. Great, let's now export and import these particles into Blender. To export these particles, we won't use the method I showed you a few videos ago, because there's actually a better one. What I like to do is to go to File, Preferences, and then check Export Particle Sequence while simming. In our project folder, we want to create a new folder, which we can for example name Cache. Let's copy the file path and paste it right in here. Awesome. Let's click on Close and then press on Sim. You can see that cache files have been created for the last few frames. Let's overwrite these cache files with the new simulation. So let's press sim again and you will be able to see that new cache files will be generated and the old ones, which were just used to place the particles correctly, are being overwritten. Back in Blender we can disable the temporary collection again and unhide all of the meshes. We can now go ahead and choose import, alembic and select the first mesh in our sequence. Let's choose is sequence and click on import alembic. Initially we scaled up the collider, so let's scale it down by 0.1. Now all of the particles are placed correctly and if we play our animation, you can see that all of the particles were exported correctly. Strangely, when importing the sequence, my starting frame was changed to zero. If this happens to you, just change it back to one. Okay, great, and now you can see that everything works great in motion. Let's now quickly assign an object to each individual vertex and give these dirt particles a material. For the renderable object, I'll use an icosphere with one subdivision and I'll also scale it down. Before I parent this object to the storm point sequence, I will select both of these objects and move them into the foreground collection. Let's now select the icosphere and shift select the point sequence and with Ctrl P, parent the icosphere to the storm points. With the point sequence selected, I'll go to Instancing and Enable Vertices. Let's now scale down the icosphere until it fits. 
And just like this, we have assigned an object to each individual vertex. I'll also select the icosphere, right click and choose Shade Smooth. And now I will give it the same material we gave to the ground. Let's make this material a single user copy, so we can delete everything except the basic texture setup. If I now go into the material preview mode, you can see that this works great, but I want to scale up the texture by a little bit. What I also want to do is add in the object info node and randomize the location vector. This will offset the texture slightly for each object. We can use the same trick with a hue saturation and value node and put in a random value for the saturation and maybe value. To finish this video off, let's try and render a single frame and composite it in the Blender compositor. We'll use the same render settings as last time, but before I press F12, I quickly want to load in a simple HDRI. Make sure you use one that works well with your environment. Okay, great, let's now press F12 to render our scene. And just like this, we have it rendered out. Of course, the CG objects are way too sharp and a little bit off in color. So let's go into the compositor and find our foreground render layers node. And let's now add in a blur node. And for me, I have to blur it by two pixels. And we can also color correct it a little bit to better composite it in. And yeah, that's basically it. This is how we can create a simple ground burst from scratch with Blender and Storm. Okay, I hope you enjoyed these two tutorials. If you learned something, consider liking and subscribing and we'll see each other in the next video next Saturday.